So today we really wanted to talk about um, what, it, what is a smart cage? What is this technology? What it's all about and how, how the smart technology and, and DVC can help you in your, in your facility from a day-to-day -day basis. How can technology help us? Well, it's kind of interesting because the, the whole world right now is everything is about, uh, about the internet, the internet of things, um, artificial intelligence, one of the biggest uh, engines that we have out there to, to help us in our day-to-day -day lives is Google. So we already have a lot of this, communi this communication ability and technology in our facilities today. A lot of it happens on the clinical side of things in our facilities on a day-to-day -day basis, but really now it's about how we can use it in the, the lab animal, in the facility, in the vivarium to improve that technology. Um, we spend as consumers billions of dollars a year on, on new smartphones and tablets, things that make our life easier. So really the question is, how can it help us and is it time to, to introduce this into our facilities? Now, this is kind of a, a, a funny uh, breakthrough transition slide. And I decided, I didn't know if I should keep it in here or not, but basically um, the internet of the animal, that's, that's really what we're talking about. Technology is moving fast um, and we can use it in a variety of different ways. I mean, if you, if you take this photo for what it is, it could represent a head post animal that, that we all have. But in reality, we do a lot of our testing, uh, open field tests, maze tests outside of the home cage. So really this is trying to take a look at what data can we gain from the animal in our behavior and research that will help us with, without having to take that animal out of the home cage in a different environment potentially causing stressors and how we can move forward. So the question now is, if this technology was available, how would you use it uh, and, and would you use it? So this right here, this, this yellow box, this is really why we developed uh, new technology, which we'll, we'll get into. Most of these animals spend 99% of their time in the home cage. Um, most of the time, uh, mice in particular, they are more active at night. We all know this, yet from eight to four or nine to five, we spend that time in the facility um, disrupting the animals because it's, it's our schedule instead of theirs. So we really lose a large window uh, to be able to, to capture important information and behavioral data from, from those animals. Next is environmental factors. These can be the cage changes. These can be just somebody walking into the room. Um, this can be effects of weaning and taking the, the, the cage off the rack and going underneath the, the chain station or the biosafety cabinet. This can be noise and vibration if you've got construction going on next door in your facility. So a lot of factors here that we can look at and use technology to, to make a more efficient uh, program. And lastly, this, this green box here, which represents, um, as I said, what we're doing inside the home cage, which is at this point is, is very little and, and most of it gets done outside the cage. This, this also focuses on animal welfare, behavior and locomotion. We're gonna to learn today that, that the movement of the animal can be used to detect um, how these animals might be feeling or the effects of a drug or a certain compound that we inject into the animal. So, um, you know, I can't take the history major out of me. So I, I've got to have just a couple of slides on, on history. Why, why did Technoplast create um, a, a new smart technology? And, and basically, we started with uh, a peer group. Back in 2012, uh, we, we got a, a great group of, of some of, them, uh, of your colleagues, perhaps, and, and peers in the industry, uh, from academia to biotech to pharmaceutical companies. And we sat down with this group. We exchanged ideas. We networked. And we, we really just listen. Um, so uh, some of the points from the peer group, um, as they discussed and sat back and, and took notes, you know, let's, let's come up with real standardization based on objective data. Let's try to improve the workload and efficiency in the SOP. We don't really want to change our SOPs too much, but if you can provide a tool that can help us with our day-to-day -day planning, that would be great. Um, of course, let's look at mitigating the, the risks and how we lose animals uh, or detect the sick animals sooner. And, and let's try to do this in the home cage. That was really important. Um, the group continued to discuss and they became more innovative and they, they decided to, to think a little bit more outside of the box. How can we reduce operative costs? That's something we all look at, but, but not closely enough probably in our day-to-day -day, uh, management of the facility. How can we improve sustainability? Can we get 
better reproducibility uh, uh, of, our, of our studies uh, by not changing the cages often. And really, um, how can we reduce more of these tedious tasks? How can we give people the technology to increase the efficiency and process in our facility? So essentially, uh, with that concept uh, and, and product profile that was developed by the peer group, uh, Technoplast went forward and, and took these key features, these desires and wants, and developed the DVC. So essentially, this was the birth of the DVC. DVC is going to exploit the power of having hardware at the cage level through an intuitive and user-centric software. So really, the next question was, after we took this information and developed it, who is it for? And obviously, um, these are the pillars that, that make up what, what DVC is today. It's for the manager. How can we streamline uh, efficiencies inside the vivarium and, and provide these people with, with checklists of what to do? Uh, it's for the technicians and the animal care staff. Uh, what can we look at and how, uh, in the, the daily health checks and how can we make daily health checks better? And, and maybe even the cage changing process. And then lastly, in a huge critical pillar of what the DVC stands for that we'll look at at the end of the presentation is, is what can the researchers pull? What kind of live notifications can we give the researchers? What kind of data and trends can, can we look at as we move forward? So that being said, um, the new frontier as it stands today is the DVC and the smart cage on, on the right. You know, if you think about it in the 40s, 50s, 60s, the, the industry started off with, you know, very basic rudimentary caging, wood boxes. And then, and then we grew into mold injected cages that unfortunately were opaque and we couldn't see through. Um, polycarbonate came rolling along and all of a sudden we were filling up our, our large animal rooms with, with mice and, and rats and cages that we could actually see into. Um, the big transition in the industry prior to the small cage was the invention and innovation of the individually ventilated cage. And, and Technoplast in particular, uh, being a leader on this front, went from the conventional cage to blue line, green line, and now emerald is available. But again, the new frontier and what there is to discover is the technology and benefits that can be had from, from DVC. We strongly believe that this is the, the new frontier for, for IVCs. So I wanna stop uh, this real, real quickly and, and look at the working principle of, of the DVC. It's important to note that um, Here's some of the components. The, some people refer to this box on top of the blower as the brain. We refer to it as the master. Uh, this has a uh, linking capability much like the Technoplast racks that, that many of you know. So for one master and one blower, we can do four single-sided racks of DVC or two double-sided racks. In the video, we're gonna see that each cage slot has a uh, plug underneath it. You can see the cords here that connect to the master. So all of the information that this rack is providing from the cage level is going back to the master and it's being stored on a local server or it can be up into the cloud. We can help support that um, as an organization, but that is up to you as the client and how that's stored. Now moving through with this video. So the way the system works is each cage position has a plate that has 12 sensors or electrodes in it. It's sending off low frequency EMF and each sensor is collecting um, you know, data every second, lots of data. And what we're able to provide with these EMF signals is we have the ability to detect drops in the EMF mag magnification fields, um, not only for the moisture content in the bedding indicating uh, perhaps a wet or dirty cage, but also the activity of the animals, the mice in this case, how they're moving, the trajectory of how they're moving through the cage. We replace the standard green line runners with those that have LED sensors on them. In this case, these sensors at the front of the cage are detecting the presence of a water bottle. We'll talk about this a little bit more coming up. At the rear, there's also another sensor, LED, that is checking for the presence of food. Both the water bottle and the food are 24-7, real lifetime tracking. You can see there when the food level gets low, it's going to send an alarm to refill that. Now, each plate has an RFID antenna underneath, and the standard 0.2 micron filter has an RFID tag on the top. So as soon as this cage is docked onto the rack, all of this information, the protocol, the PI, um, animals in the cage, 
real-time census and RFID, all of that is being transmitted through, and we can find that as benefits to the system. So I want to give you an example um, of how this really works. I'm going to switch to laser point here because I'll be utilizing this for the next couple of slides. So each of these boxes represents one of the 12 sensors on, on the plate underneath this cage. Of course, we do not have cameras on our, on our system. We did this just to show you how the DVC and the MF is tracking the, the mobility of, of these animals. When I start the video, what you're gonna notice is that these animals, and you can see already, um, as soon as they step on these electrodes, the, the DVC picks up uh, on the drop-in signal of the EMF, and it creates, it creates this, this drop-in line. Here you can see there's no movement, and when the animals are over it, there's a drop. This mouse in particular, he's gonna come around the cage, he's gonna circle around, and we're gonna see a drop over here in, in the electrode 12. So let's, let's get this Let's get this started. So you can see their movement. And, and I want you to know too that we just have two mice in this cage. We can have uh, up to five mice in, in the cage and it's gonna pick up um, all of their, their movement in the cage and it's gonna formulate through an algorithm. Um, and that's how we get these, these signals. Um, and we're gonna find out that it's gonna be able to detect uh, certain behavior trends that, that we'll analyze in slides uh, towards the end of the presentation. So three main benefits to DVC. Um, we have the ability to uh, monitor the cage environments. We're going to go through that. This is really um, for the facility manager and a tool that it, we, we can provide them. Uh, the purple during this presentation is going to represent the caretaker, the health uh, animal care staff and the technicians. Um, we can provide 24 detection of what's happening in the cage and, and existing cage conditions. And then lastly, and, and very importantly, um, we turn to the PI and the researchers and what data we can get and provide uh, through the system for, for these folks. Really, it's a product for everybody. So let's let's dig into the basic modules or platforms. So with the husbandry platform, we have six essential uh, platforms that, that we, we can provide. The bedding condition analysis I'll talk about. Um, this is uh, detecting when you should change a cage based on, on the institution's feedback. The food availability and water bottle availability are all set to 15 minute uh, defaults, but we can adjust those um, so you can just pick those up at the end of the day. If you're low on food, you can have somebody go in and top off the food at the end of the day, especially on a Friday before a weekend. Um, water flood detection, it will detect flooding from a water bottle, but really this is mostly important for automatic watering. So it will detect a constant drip in, in the back of the cage, which could potentially signal a flood, a flood alarm event in that cage, the system will send off an alarm uh, to you at that point uh, to assess the, the flood uh, event. Any cage missing from the rack, uh, we have the capability to go into the system and identify where the cage is. For instance, if you have a PI taking the cage up to the lab, um, cage tracking and census. This is also, this is real time 24 seven. So you can go in and simultaneously automatically upload with 100% accuracy the census of all the animals in your room. Um, there are other solutions out there for census, but this is the only one that's automatic, uh, meaning it doesn't require scanning, barcoding, or, or any other type of uh, manual labor involved. So just to go back real quickly to these, the automatic bottle check. Um, it will detect whether there's a presence of a bottle and same thing on the food. Uh, we can get alarms set up for this and, and put that as part of our planning uh, during the day. Now we get to the dirty cage and the clean cage baseline. And this is where a lot of the value comes in for, for bedding changes. So we're so used to changing our cages on, you know, for IBCs, a 14 day calendar period. Um, that during the learning phase, this dirty phase here, this baseline is established um, when DVC is set up based on the criteria you as the facility or the institution deem a, a dirty cage is. So in this instance, we're looking at cage position E5. This cage has, has three mice in it, and we can sense 
by this, this chart graph here, um, up and down in signal. Uh, the up is when the animal isn't moving. Um, maybe those are signals that are taken uh, during the night. But overall, from day zero to day oh, 23, 24, uh, we are hitting this, this baseline at day 20, which is going to be an indicator that we need to change, change that cage. You know, why would we change the cage if it's not dirty, according to your set standards, uh, before it needs to be, just because it says we have to uh, on a calendar. Now, it's important to note, too, this uh, criteria can be adjusted once you have the dirty baseline uh, established. So with DBC, for instance, we can, let's say you had uh, animals with diabetes, we can set that and make a new protocol uh, so we can, we can uh, change that uh, to a two-week cage change. So the benefit of this is that we end up changing cages far less um, from a criteria-based uh, scheduling change than a, the than a calendar. So we get better reproducibility uh, of, our, of our studies. We can potentially reduce the risk of uh, lab animal exposure to our, our users and cross-contamination cross for the animals. And we can provide better research uh, due to less man-mouse interaction in the system. So this next chart, this is actually uh, a European study that happened. This is from CCC, uh, CCP, excuse me, the Czech Center for Phenogenomics in Prague. This is a 6,000 cage facility, uh, all DDC. And this particular study was done with 2,500 cages for about six months. Um, so what we can see here is that um, through, through the study, uh, the, the green represents the cage, cage, uh, cage change by calendar every 14 days approximately. The orange is by criteria. And what we find during the study is that when you've got four or five animals in the mice, we're really not changing that cage uh, any longer. Maybe 14 days here with four animals, but certainly uh, right on par with the calendar, 14 day with five. But the big difference comes with one, two, three animals in the cage. We can extend that out to 24, 23, and even 21 days. Again, this is based on, on your criteria for the dirty cage. So in this, in this study, that CCC, CCP did for us, there's an overall decrease of 38% in, in cage changing. A study done in the United States, um, similarly, uh, they saved about 8,000 labor hours over a year and reduced bedding material by 50% through that, that study. So let's move into the animal welfare aspect of the, the DVC system now. So when you take into consideration the metadata, that's, that's information that's coming from the caretaker or the uh, animal health technician. You combine that with what the DVC is doing uh, from a hardware standpoint. And really, we have the ability to look at uh, nighttime welfare checks using that, that activity and movement of the animal during the nighttime to create anomalies. Um, and from that, we can read charts uh, and graphs and determine how sick potentially these animals are. And these are just some, some potential indicators down here. I mean, if you see a severely degraded locomotion or uh, over a short time, this could mean the animal is, is sick with paralysis or, or perhaps even dead. Um, if the animal movement uh, isn't as progressive it, it, and it's over a longer amount of time, it could be you know sickness uh, like ALS, for instance. So looking at this is, is all very uh, crucial in how we uh, get this, uh, this information. So here's an example of a night welfare check. Um, this is a great slide because um, when the technician comes in in the morning, they can log into the daily planner and they can see if there's been any uh, night welfare uh, tasks created for, for health checks. So the, the user can see there have been four anomalies created during the night based on an animal welfare score. There's five different scores here and so it's interesting, when we look at this first chart, we can see that from July 23rd to the, the, the 26th, you know, the animal was receiving pretty much normal uh, movement. Um, however, it was receiving anomaly scores um, for the next four days. So when we look at this cage and its position C7, um, we can see that this animal was suffering from anomalous hypoactivity. So really from July 29th all the way through the 1st, we see a, a pretty major uh, decrease in, in animal movement over time, which could be indicative of, of, of a sick animal. Um, the heat map basically mimics uh, the, the chart up here. The red 
indicates uh, more movement uh, for this animal. And, and so you can see actually here at, at 20 hundred hours, um, probably nighttime activity, uh, more red all the way through the morning until about uh, three or so in the morning, the animal was, was, was very active. But again, this shows the, the inactivity of the animal, which, which would cause an alarm for, for the researcher to do a better, or sorry, the caretaker to do a better health check. So at that point, they can go in and create a sickness report for the animal. This is critical because it's, it's all done in the room from, from a tablet. Um, they can click this icon, they can go in and, and describe what's happening with the animal, and then they can forward this information to the veterinarian or a surgical research staff to come in and, and take a look at this animal and diagnose what's happening. Here's your animal in trouble. We can get a notification through a text or email on the phone or our laptop. This is the night welfare check report. And in some cases, this is gonna be great. Um, so you can look at information over time. Was this consistent with what happened yesterday? Was it consistent with what happened the week before or even a month? This is also a nice tool to generate reports, perhaps for ALAC coming in or your quarterly IACU visits. The other thing that we can do with the DVC is with all of this, we wanna make sure we can successfully integrate with your existing animal management systems. Um, these are the uh, vendors that we have successfully integrated with. But, but this is important because um, it allows you to have the, the system that you currently have integrate with the DVC. So all that information is being shared directly on, on essentially one, one method of communication and platform. So now, now that we um, understand what we can do from the uh, cage management and the, the night welfare check side of it. I, I wanna jump into some of the really important slides about animal behavior and how the, the researchers can, can look at these. Um, these next slides, uh, you, it's required that we have, uh, sorry about that. It's required that we have the analytics platform. And this is just another module that you can have. Uh, we've got three data analysts uh, in-house that help support and train and provide feedback on, on, these, uh, on these charts. So what we're looking at here is a European study where they had um, six cages of control group and six cages of a study group, two cages or two animals per cage, excuse me. Um, and what we can see with DVC is before the injection, this, these first four days are the acclimation period. And with DVC, we can see that the study group had more activity than the control group. Um, but we can see both of their ex activity was, was very different. Um, day five, we get to the injection uh, of the compound in this experiment, and we can see that, that following the injection, both of their activity is, is still different, but, but in the end, uh, activity overall is in decline. Um, we can also see with some of these measurements here that we have um, man-mouse interaction, uh, even in the home cage. Uh, these, these cages here indicate that cage taken off the rack uh, or, or put back on the rack. So um, we can also see that lights have been on in the room and lights have been off in the room. So again, with these, we can really pick up on trends of how these animals differentiate through the study prior to or during the acclimation and then again after the injection or the compound or procedure has been, has been done. This is a great slide. Um, there's a lot of information here and I'm gonna do my best to relate um, both of these. Essentially, um, these, these uh, two charts mimic each other. You've got the days here running horizontally uh, on this heat map uh, chart down here, they're, they're, they're running vertically. But let's look at the bedding change first. So these, these, these orange bars represent bedding changes and they are in direct correlation with the heat map below. So for instance, this cage change here is in direct correlation with this box on the heat map. This bar is, is this one here and, and vice versa, this one is, is this bar. So when we look at this from a, how do, what, what does this do behaviorally for the animal? You know, this cage change started, you know, maybe around 12 o'clock. And each of these vertical uh, uh, bars here represent one minute in, in time. So 
even if the cage change took a minute just using an average, we can see that basically from 12 o'clock to somewhere around, you know, 15, 30, 1600 hours, this animal was, was stressed or potentially stressed. We do know because we watch these animals that they have to create new nesting material. They have to get their bedding exactly the way they want it. But it's, it's, it's interesting to see how devastating an actual bedding change can be for these animals um, in the cage. Next, we have the light on and, and light off. Um, so we can see that when the light goes off at night, again, with the red and orange being the, the most movement, we can see how, how active uh, these animals are during the night. All through the night, and then again, um, this is the next morning, uh, they, they start to become less active, you know, around two, three in the morning. And then again, as soon as the lights come on, they are, they are active. And there's a lot that we can pull from this that we haven't even seen. I mean, this incidence here could be mice being weaned, uh, a weaning activity, or, or mice being weighed. So they're, they're very active again uh, during the day when, when they, they should, should not be in, being active during the night. We can also see here, this is the day that the injection came. So all this is, is considered acclimation. At this point in the study, uh, post-injection with that compound, we can see that overall animal activity has dropped. Um, so this could be a potential indicator for the researcher that, that the compound is taking effect. So let's look at other tools that we can uh, use inside the home cage and, and gain valuable information from our animals. This is the running wheel. And the running wheel, uh, this is real-time tracking of animal activity. Uh, and thank you to the sensors on here we can actually track uh, when, when the mice are running and the, the overall distance that they run. This is available uh, to use with DVC or you can use it just, just on the regular green line racks too. You just won't have the ability without DVC to analytically track this. Um, so what we see here in, in these charts is spontaneous activity and voluntary will activity. What's interesting is all of the activity on both of these uh, graphs happens at night, usually in between, you know, 1800 hours and, and six in the morning. Spontaneous activity is activity that's not happening on the wheel, just, just normal movement through the day um, or activity at the night as it stands here. Uh, pretty normal activity. The voluntary activity is, is what happens on the wheel itself. So we can see when these animals jumped on the wheel and for, for how long they, uh, they ran. Um, and then in the end, we can uh, take that information and really take the average out. We can, we can see how these animals ran. Um, 23, this one in particular, 23 kilometers in five days. So for dedicated light cycle, we developed the Letty, um, both in a red and, and black cage. The, the Letty was essentially designed for circadian rhythm studies. Um, so the way this technology works, and again, it can work with DVC or not, um, a battery-powered LED battery pack uh, sits up top in the wire bar feeder, and um, it can be adjusted uh, according to uh, lux levels that you need, depending on the particular study. So on average, it's going to go about two weeks, which meets the average calendar day uh, cage change schedule, um, but do know that every battery pack can be set in a different way. So this allows the researcher to do different, different time studies or uh, endpoint studies uh, with circadian rhythm on the rack at the same time. Um, and uh, we also have the ability to mimic the, with the battery pack the effect of the sun coming up in the morning and the sun coming down. All that can be plugged into your laptop. It can be programmed so it can be run. Um, we have the two cages. Uh, with the red cage, obviously you can see into the cage um, and monitor those animals. We do recommend that with the Letty, if you go with the black cage, um, which won't allow any visibility or light transmission uh, at all through the cage, that you use DVC. This is not to take away from the fact that you have to do a, light check, uh, a health check on the animal. And when you do that, um, you want to make sure that the health check is done during the time the battery light pack is on so you don't disturb the natural uh, protocol and, and, and light cycle of, of that study. Um, but the DVC with the black cage will assist greatly during the night welfare checks and the overall animal movement um, that's going on in that cage. That will give us a, 
uh, a heads up, if you will, and detect any potential uh, illness to the animal before the technician can see it. So other, other options that we have for the rack um, in this case is the, the REM or the rack environmental monitoring system. So this device mounts externally to the rack. It connects to the master. Um, it's sending information such as real-time temperature, relative humidity, and noise levels uh, in decibels. Um, we can also detect vibration, uh, light, and, and human presence. I believe the human presence, if you're standing 1.5 meters in front of the rack, it's going to pick up uh, a presence at that point. So this is, this is the activity that, that we're picking up, just um, normal activity from the DVC plate, again, uh, operating during the, uh, the night hours. Um, but we have the ability also then, um, as the REM will, will indicate, that we can pick up uh, temperature in the room. We can also, this is just the detection of, of a person in front of the rack, and we can also use vibration. Uh, what we're seeing here is uh, because of the time of day, the animals as they move during the night, again, you know, usually 1800 hours to about three in the morning, they are creating vibration on the rack. Perhaps even this is an indication that, that they're using the activity wheels uh, at that time. We also track relative humidity. And uh, in this case, this is the decibel. So we can see um, that in the room, uh, the decibel level is, is uh, 57 decibels. So let's move into ISO. This is um, not just for new clients, but any of our clients, uh, and this is a big deal right now with, with COVID um, in, in the, the day and age that we live in. Any of our clients with uh, existing ISO positive and negative racks, the DVC technology can be retrofitted for those racks. Of course, you can purchase this equipment uh, with the DVC on it new, but it's important to know that it's, it's retrofitable, um, just like it is for, for the green line. Um, all of the features of DVC are available for the ISO, with the exception um, of the food and water bottle uh, mechanisms for, for recognizing that. There, there's no leak detection uh, because we wouldn't want automatic watering on a cage used in biocontainment or bioexclusion. Uh, but the analytics portion uh, for the researcher, that is available as well. And, and, and that's really key because that keeps the animals uh, in their cage, in the home cage during, during this time. You know, I mentioned some of the benefits to um, DVC and the facility management of saving bedding and, and whatnot, but especially in these areas, you have more PPE to don every morning. You have Clydox that's expensive. Um, so the fewer times you need to go in there, uh, and, and uh, look at the animals. If, if the DVC can benefit you and, and, and save some of that time in going in and, and you can demonstrate that, that you're having unusual or anomaly uh, activity, this is a huge benefit for that application. The other product that we launched um, is the DVC trolley. Technoplast has always had a recovery and transport cart, but it's never been equipped with DVC. This is great because this this offers a real, true, standalone solution, and it is basically plug and play ready to go. It comes on board with a server already in place and requires very little IT involvement. Um, we have this with 12 cages available. Uh, it can be 12 cages with a red cover and LED light. So again, this is a great scenario for uh, if you don't want to turn a whole animal holding room into a circadian rhythm room, you can just have a small transport trolley and do your circadian rhythm studies on, on it at that time. Uh, the recovery rack, different from the transport trolley um, in the fact that we can provide a heated environment in here for post-surgical animals. So just to summarize, um, Really, DVC is, is for everybody in the facility. It's for the facility manager to reduce stress on animals and to uh, make better efficient the, the SOPs that you have and, and hopefully save uh, some money uh, for the facility with, with less bedding. Uh, the animal welfare aspect, daily animal checks, the night welfare check, information that we can all gather uh, during the evening while the animals are most active and, and typically we're not there uh, inside the facility. And then, of course, for the researcher, all of the data we can analyze with these movements um, from the injection point of the study 
all the way through to help identify a much quicker solution to, to our animals becoming sick. We've got a lot of DVC publications out there. I think we've got 10 now. All of these are available on our website, so you can go there and, and download these publications and these abstracts. Uh, we encourage you to do so. You can also get in touch with your, your local sales rep. We also have um, a variety of references available. There are a lot of studies um, that are available on this website. If, if you go and click, you can see um, all of the studies that have been done. And last year, we did our first uh, annual International Digital Vivarium Forum uh, in Italy. It was very successful. I think it was very well received. I'm not sure if we're going to do another one this year just due to the pandemic, but, but stay tuned. I'm sure if we do, uh, local representation will be getting a hold of you to, to uh, uh, see if you're interested. Now is a good time just to make reminders for uh, the upcoming webinars for next week. Next Tuesday, May 12th, it's going to be Avidity. Uh, how can we reduce costs and increase efficiency? This is going to be done by Pat Peters, Director of Vivarium Sales and Professional Services. And then on Thursday, May 14th, the week from today, we'll have our very own Randy Mosley from Technoplast uh, talking about how flexible is your marmoset cage. So again, thank you to um, the ACE Exchange Board for, for uh, making sure all of this stuff is available to us. And thanks again to all of the vendors who support this and are contributing uh, during this uh, uncertain time. So that being said, I'm going to turn my uh, camera back on. And I think we're gonna go through some questions and answers if we have some here. Uh, Guido, did, did we, I saw it pop up a couple of times. Did, did we have any? Guido, are you there? Yeah, we are. Okay. Yep. Yeah, there so, are two questions. two questions. Okay. So the first question that I see here is, have any of your clients using DVC undergone ALAC review with the extended cage change frequencies? And Guido, you may have uh, more information on that than I do. Guido, could, can you share a response on that? I, I don't see that that's been answered. Sorry, one second. So, Mike, for the ALAC review, let me let me understand better with the, with George as well. So, I, I don't know how to answer at the moment, honestly. For the second one, uh, how does the water check feature work if you're using automatic water? Uh, so, here uh, the system is able to detect if there are any leak. So, once uh, the the valve starts to leak, uh, the system is able to detect a very a strong drop uh, of the signal and uh, and so we raise an alarm within a few minutes and this alarm is sent also by email to all the staff the animal uh, so the facility manager and so somebody can can act immediately and can save the cage I see a question here too, and sorry if I'm going out of order, as they come in, it, it looks like it, it uh, jumbles up the order. So um, have patience with Guido and I. How does a health check, uh, how can it be done with the black cages, the, the black leddy cages? Do you need to open the cages each health check? Um, go ahead, Guido. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, you need first a special license. Uh, of course, because uh, it's not a transparent cage and you cannot check, uh, you need to open every time. So, so yeah, uh, you needed to, to apply for a special eye cook. 
But uh, yeah, what, what Mike was uh, mentioning during the presentation is that, uh, that thanks to the DVC, we can monitor 24 on seven. And so you, we can improve and we can detect something that uh, is very hard to detect with uh, only one check per day. So, so I mean, uh, for, to reply to this answer, yes, uh, you need to, to apply for a specific uh, protocol. The next one, as research done uh, to see if there are the effect. Yes, Amanda. Uh, we have done uh, several, uh, a couple of study, uh, mainly in Europe with some institution in Europe. Uh, if you go to the website, there are all the, the information uh, with the histopathological and the behavioral study, and there are no effect. I mean, uh, ER Mike uh, is very expert uh, and uh, can add also additional information. Honestly, the, the electromagnetic field that we are generating is very, very little. I mean, compared also to the standard equipment that uh, we have uh, in, the, in the animal facility. But if you want to deep understand, uh, again, in the website, you can find all the information. How to wash the rack uh, with digital equipment? A good question, uh, Leslie. Yep. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, uh, all these uh, devices uh, uh, can be fully autoclave and wash. I mean, uh, I'm talking about the rack uh, and uh, all the electronic component, uh, you know, the mini PC over the blower. Of course, uh, you can only uh, VHP, but uh, the rest of the equipment uh, at the rack level can be fully wash and autoclave. Can the sensor get cage dust on them from feed and bedding and not work? Uh, mm, no. I mean, if you mean the sensor for RFID tag, so to detect the, the cage, no. I mean, uh, uh, it's not a big deal. If you are asking for the animal activity detection, Yes, if you have, uh, if we have too much bedding, so that they are not following our standard IVC uh, suggestion, uh, the system couldn't detect properly the animal. Yes, so I mean, uh, we have a suggestion for different, different type of uh, bedding. Usually, uh, you know, a good, a good, uh, I mean, depends from which bedding you are using, but usually is uh, uh, one centimeter for uh, uh, for, uh, um, for of bedding. Is there a way to ensure a valve is in place? Uh, Jeff, this one is a good question. At the moment with this technology, no, unfortunately, but uh, at the same time, uh, if the mice uh, doesn't have uh, the water source, uh, they are moving less uh, and so probably the system can detect or uh, reduce uh, re that the animal are moving less. So is, I don't know if you ever done a, a water restriction experiment, but I mean, if you, if the animal doesn't have the, 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 food, the, the food and the water, if the water is even worse, they are not moving. So probably they, they move less. It's something that we need to test, but unfortunately we cannot detect the valve is in place. Can you go a little more in depth on the water environmental criteria DVC uses to consider a cage dirty or time to change? Yes, Jose. Uh, and the system is able to detect moisture. Okay, so for the same concept, we can detect uh, how much dirt is the cage and the presence of the animal over uh, over a single each single electrode. The only difference uh, between the two type of water, let me say, is that uh, the animal are moving uh, very fast uh, across the time. The latrine area is always in one stop, in one spot, or in a in, uh, in one or two corner, let me say, usually. So basically the system is able to detect this very slow change of uh, moisture across the time. So thanks to the learning phase that was explained by Mike during the presentation, we define a baseline, so we define some threshold and the system applied this, uh, this threshold, this, this parameter to all the cages and once uh, the cage reach that threshold, raise a task to the animal caretaker and the animal caretaker will receive a notification and he can change the, the, the cage. Is the DVC technology available for all or will it be available for rat caging? 
Elisa, this one is uh, another good question, but all the questions are good, by the way, sorry. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, we are explore, exploring at the moment. And so the answer is no, we don't have anything available at the moment, uh, but uh, uh, we are just trying to understand if the DVC technology itself with, uh, with the board, with the sensor is, uh, can work with the rat. Uh, and this is something that is our, in our pipeline for product uh, development. What is the comparative cost between your IVC rack and DVC rack, uh, Richard? Um, I mean, uh, the the ratio is uh, the ratio is uh, uh, a bit less uh, the double of a standard IVC rack. So if you have uh, one rack uh, IVC and you want to to have the, the exactly the same with the DVC board with the electronic component is a bit less than the double. And the good thing is that uh, if you are our customer with uh, green line cages and the green line rack, uh, you don't need to replace the rack and the cages because we can retrofit your rack. Okay, so I mean uh, the, the investment could be a bit a little uh, uh, smaller. Is there uh, available data on life of the VC compared to regular IVC? In other words, what is the life of the sensor based on Washington autoclave aging? So the Prague, uh, the Prague facility that we have uh, is in place since 2015, uh, and uh, which we replace uh, since then uh, uh, less than 10 boards. Okay. Um, when uh, we launched the product, we ran some tests uh, with autoclave. We ran more than 10 autoclave, one behind the other one, and uh, we never saw any, any, board, uh, any defect on the board. Uh, so at the moment, uh, the, you know, the, the lifespan of the component are a bit, uh, uh, is, is, is long, I mean. Can the VHP in the room with all the component tax? Yes, I mean, the VHP is perfect for sanitization. Has the DVC has been validated for multiple types of bedding or is there a specific bedding compatible to measure a dirty cage? Uh, yes, I mean, can work with all the bedding that you are used to use, honestly. Uh, you don't need to change the, the bedding. They, uh, there are some bedding that are uh, uh, releasing, they are not absorbing, sorry, the urine, and so they stay uh, dry longer compared to other one. And so with some bedding, uh, you can take the cage longer in the, in the position without change. Can you please send me the links for other uh, talks that you showed uh, to the attendees? Uh, yes, we will send out the presentation to all the people that joined the, the the, the 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 webinar. Yep. Yeah. Hey, Guido. Yeah. I I think you may have missed one. I, I was just going back. I know we missed one. I think it was like our second question, but I, I'm not sure. Yes. We Cheryl here about various bedding types with the DVC. Um. Which one? Sorry. Uh, the the various bedding types with the DVC. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just I just replied to that one. Okay, sorry, I was looking up above and making sure uh -huh. I didn't forget one. <laughs> no problem. Uh, if the cage is removed from the rack, uh, will the readings be an ident identical when the cage is returned, or will there be a new baseline established of each uh, of the 12 sensor? Extremely good question, James. Uh, I mean, uh, um, this system uh, is not working in absolute value. So in the slide that we put, uh, we add only basic information. So the algorithm behind is not, uh, is never evaluating the absolute value. Um, by the way, every time that you change the cage, you need to perform a, a task with the, with, the, with, the, with the DVC software and the DVC software is uh, uh, re establishing a new baseline. Okay, because we need to teach, to tell to the system, uh, this is a new cage, please start again to evaluate the cage. Uh, but again, you don't need, and other things that Mike didn't mention, you can move the cage across the rack. You don't need to keep the cage always in the same position. So 
Given that uh, each cage is tagged with RFID, you can move one cage from one position to another position, or from one rack to another rack, from one room with the DVC to another room with the DVC, and the system is always tracking uh, where the cage is and is always applying uh, the, the, you know, uh, is always trying to understand if a cage is dirty or not. Does the DVC, DVC rack measure relative humidity for every single cage or wall rack? Also, can, can it identify flooding in the cage? So the DVC, uh, so here, uh, yes, the DVC is measuring the, the moisture, okay? Is measuring the moisture over the board. So if, given that the board is, uh, uh, between the board and the cage we have here, the, the board is measuring the moisture, so the humidity between the cage and the board, and the material over the cage and also the hair inside the, the, the cage. And for every single cage, yes. We have an, the other solution that is called the REC environmental monitoring that was presented by, by Mike, that is measuring the uh, humidity at the room REC level, but uh, at that, that point, uh, let me say that is more at the room level. And uh, of course, uh, the system can identify the flooding uh, in the cage because uh, we can detect uh, that, that uh, the, you know, the, the, there is a fast, uh, um, a fast change in terms of uh, moisture inside the cage, uh, and so we can detect the flooding by bottle or by uh, auto, auto watering system. I just skip the first one, uh, and I ask a support to Giorgio. Yeah. Uh, so um, basically, ELAC is, is suggesting to keep uh, uh, the animal in a good uh, welfare state. So there are no uh, specific threshold to comply to comply with, but uh, we need to monitor the cage environment, pollution, and ammonia. So uh, the DVC is usually, as uh, shown by uh, by by Mike. Uh, is usually uh, not prolonging cage period for cages with four and five animals, okay? Because the, you know the level of the urine inside the cage is quite uh, is, is quite a big amount, but the real extent can be achieved only with a few animal uh, that are producing less uh, less uh, less urine, and so the you know the IBC system can dry up. Uh, faster the, uh, you know, the, the urine inside the cage. I don't know if I reply to, to this question, honestly, uh, sh Sherry. And, and I, I, you know, I think Marcel brings up a good point. And, and Marcel, I, I need your question. I, I can't find it, but, you know, I think to expand on this, the, the DBC sets the baseline, um, you know, for, for the, the cage change. Um, and then that, you know, that, that is the performance. It has to be documented and then probably approved by, by lo uh, local IACUC, as, as Marcel is saying there. And it should be good to go with, with ALAC. Thank you, Mike. Let's see. I think there are other two questions. Yep, there are two more questions. I would think uh, any facility that wishes to extend the should collect data to enact a performance standard for ALAC to review. Uh, yes, and I, I think that's I think that's what we're saying. The, the DVC would establish the baseline for the extended cage change. It would need approval by IACUC, and then that would be the performance standard for ALAC. Um, institution we're presenting. Thank you, Michelle. Um, and then the last question down there uh, for now, Kathleen. Uh, it would be nice if someone could get back to us about regulatory response about the increase in time between cage changes, which I support, more con conducive to rodent behavior, but this will be a regulatory issue. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> and uh, and we could support you if you want. I mean, we did also an experiment, the effect of the bedding change it is published on plus one and in our website, you can find all the information. But again, if you contact us, we can send you the, all the references of this study. 
And uh, yeah, and I mean, for one minute of, uh, I don't know if you remember the slide that, uh, that uh, Mike showed, but one minute of, uh, of bedding change of this uh, task is uh, generating a massive activity in the, in the cage. And sometimes, I don't know if you notice, I think, yes, but uh, for male cages, the, the male can start to fight again. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we are considering as Techniplast the bedding change, uh, not only as uh, a, a perfect uh, a key, a perfect key for the return of investment, but also for the animal welfare point of view. Okay, so today we didn't have too much time to ex exploit also this point, but uh, for us, uh, it's very, very massive uh, task, uh, the, uh, the bedding change. Uh, honestly, for some experiment, experiment that we are doing, uh, we are also not considering the data for the day of the uh, bedding change because, uh, you know, the activity generated is too much stronger and uh, we are not taking consideration. So, yeah. So if you want to con contact Mike and uh, we can uh, open a discussion, we are more than welcome to support you. Yeah, and, and let me just add to that real quickly, Guido. Uh, thank you. You know, the criteria for this extended cage change um, really comes from the institution. Um, you know, we know based on some extended cage changes that if you've got one, two, three animals in that cage, uh, there's facilities that are going 30 plus days. However, with that, um, we know that's, that's, you know, a little aggressive and maybe you don't want to go that far, but each facility probably has their own internal whether it's in an SOP or not, um, cage change um, schedule based on up two corners up front are, are wet or maybe it's three or four corners or maybe it's some other combination of criteria. So during the learning phase and when we establish this, um, we have 10 cages with one mouse, 10 cages with two, three, four, five. That facility, those technicians, and usually it's a group effort um, between a technician, a supervisor, or a manager, or maybe even a vet, decide, hey, is it time to change this cage today? So really all of that information is done based off the criteria that's already there at the university. So realizing that maybe 21, 28 days is, is too long uh, for a number of other variables that, that may be critical in your, in your facility and how you, you run your facility, um, the, the fact is you can do it. It's, it's getting, that, getting that approval um, by IACUC, and it may be uh, specific protocol driven as well that, that will uh, let you leverage that extended cage change. I wish I could find uh, Marcel uh, had a question. I, I think it was if we have DVC and we only use it for two months of the year. Marcel? Yeah, yeah. Go to the yeah. tab answered uh, is this the first question I suppose. Did you find it? Uh, I, I did not, no. So on the question answer uh, tab, switch to answered. And this and this should be the fourth okay. yeah, question. Yeah, here we go. An important question to answer is, what if I purchase the DVC but only use it two months out of the year? Can I use DVC uh, the other 10 months as an IBC? And, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Guido, but the, the answer is, is yes. Um, you, can yes. Have, you can have the whole rack set up for DVC, but you can only have, you know, if you'd like, you can only have uh, rows or columns, you know, one and two activated. The, the rest of the rack can, can be normal. So, yes, it can be set up to, to run, you know, uh, specifically for just the cage that, cages that you want. Good question, Marcel. Yes, he just up again. Thank you, Marcel. Uh, thank you, Kathleen. Her, her comment is, you have good points, and this is a topic for discussion. Thank you. Um, and Marcel, yes, that's the answer, because at a company I'm at, uh, the AV, that's the case. Yep, so very good. Um, uh, any... Any other questions? Uh, I think that might, I'm going to search one more time here.
I think that's it on questions. And so that being said, I want to thank everybody for participating today. If you have additional questions, this was recorded and I think we're gonna be sending out the link for that, but please get in touch with your local Technoplast rep and um, we'll assist you with, with anything that you need. But again, stay safe, stay healthy, and thank you all for attending today. Um, take care.